Welcome back to Switched to Linux. It is Monday, it is time for another top five. And uh, this is a, a little bit of a hybrid of something, but somebody asked me for a video like this, like what are some of the top tools on Ubuntu Mate? Uh, and this was actually in response to what I did, I think back in June, looking at Linux Mint and what are the top Linux Mint utilities. Um, this one here, I uh, maybe I'll come back and do a, a top five Ubuntu Mate utilities. Um, but what I wanted to talk about today is the top five tools I'm using in Ubuntu Mate to do some more of my digital minimalizing. So uh, by what I mean by digital minimalizing is um, in my efforts to uh, just cut the stuff out of my house that's really not important. One of the biggest things that occurred to me is, you know, we all have a lot of files. We all have a lot of uh, some of those are paper files, some of those are not paper files, some of those are just files that are just in our way. Now, one of the big things that I happen to have is just stacks and stacks of tax records, and they look like this, okay? Um, in here, I happen to have, this represents one year of tax records that I have. Um, and so what I'm doing is I've been taking the painstaking task of converting these to digital and running them through a scanner. And I have probably taken 10 to 15 bags of shredded uh, material out to the trash cans in the last couple of months as I've been doing this. Now, obviously some of my years have been a little bit easier. This is actually my first full year of running my own business. So it's a little small, um, but... What I wanted to talk about is the tools that I'm using, not only just for the taxes, which of course are all paper, but um, how am I archiving my CD collection and things like that. Um, and I, of course, I have an extensive sermon collection as well. So we're going to talk about those type of things here today. So here we are on Ubuntu Mate, which is my backup computer. This is a full operating system that contains a master backup archive of all of my offline files. So of course, just because I'm backing up taxes does not mean that those taxes go on my NAS drive over here because I don't need to access them on a daily basis. I'm keeping them backed up on two offline storage bases for now. There will be a third um, once I'm done with everything and have a full implemented, implemented strategy in place. But what are the tools that I'm using? Well, the first is obviously to put all that junk into digital files as I'm simply using SimpleScan. Um, so SimpleScan is a very nice, easy to use uh, system. It will auto detect any scanners that you have in the system. And I totally forgot to put a piece of paper in there. So let's see, what, let me find a piece of paper um, or something. I'm just gonna go ahead and scan this uh, card here. Okay, so I've went ahead and I've dropped that onto my scanner. Now the scanner does have an auto feeder at the top and a single page scan. The default is a single page scan. So I'm just gonna push the scan button and that should not have a problem starting the scan, hopefully as long as the system set up, there it is, okay. So you'll see that it's scanning. So uh, this is just one of those little business card size uh, plastic uh, advertisement things I have for my uh, one book. And uh, basically what this guy here is doing is it's gonna do a scan. Now, of course, if you just save it like this, it's gonna save this whole eight and a half by 11. So what you might wanna do is just push the crop button and then you can just kinda cut it right back down in size to the size that you want it to be. And then when you hit your save button here, Let's go ahead and hit it to save, and then it's just gonna go ahead and save your PDF. All right. So you can see here that this is my PDF, and it will, of course, the just the PDF viewer that's kind of built in will just kind of give you that in full window size. So that's kind of how that guy works, but let me show you what happens if you wanna scan in another item. So let me go throw something else on the scanner here. Okay, so, one thing you can do is I went ahead and threw, a, uh, threw the other book on there, hit the scan. Now by default, it's gonna grab whatever's on that crop side, which I can readjust the size, or I can just click the button and get rid of the crop. So we'll hit it again, and now I'll kind of crop this guy on. Now what this guy will do by default is, if you happen to have a, um, a series of files here, it's gonna save it as a multi-sized PDF, okay? So let's just go ahead and save it now. Um, and it looks like since we already have this set as this particular PDF, now you'll see that it's a multi-page PDF. 
Um, but then there's other things that, that you can do. So like, for example, if I were to delete this one, save the document, now it'll only save as, as the single document. So there's a lot of different things that you can do with simple scan. That's why, uh, that's why it is, uh, I'm using that as, as that, as that system. I totally forgot to set this as always on top. Let's go ahead and do that for next time. There we are. <laughs> now you can actually see me. All right, so uh, that is kind of what I wanted to do on the first tool. Now there are times, for example, like maybe the system crashes. It's actually only happened on me once. I have probably archived several thousand pages at this point in time. It has crashed on me once. All right. Um, but suppose that you want to make some adjustments to this PDF. So the second tool that I'm going to use is um, you can have this other tool which is called PDF Shuffler. This is one you have to install. Uh, PDF Shuffler is not installed by default, but you can look it up in the repository. It's already there. Go ahead and open up a file. I'm going to go to desktop and I'm going to open up card. What this will allow me to do is make any edits. So I could do things like, um, uh, I, should, I should be able to move pages around. Uh, I haven't used this a lot. Um, I just kind of jump into here. It looks like I, maybe I can't um, uh, move pages around as easily, but uh, one thing I can do is I can export it. Uh, so this kind of has a feel to some of the edits that you can do. Which one is this? This is um, book two. So you can go ahead and you can edit, um, uh, edit different PDFs. So maybe I want to come over here and um, let's go ahead and export this one as well. This is book one. So if I actually wanted to change the order, there might be a, a better way to do that. But oh, actually what I did want to do though is I wanted to delete the first book first. So let's delete that one and now I can add that one to it. There we are. So you can just kind of move your order around. This will just enable you to at, you know, put PDFs together. So if you want, want to do things in multiple segments and then combine them all into one giant PDF, or you know, in some of my taxes, I might have three different credit reports for each of the major um, major credit bureaus, including Equihacks. Unfortunately, um, I could actually combine those into one file, or I could um, I could export. Uh, I could split up individual files. If something were scanned in the wrong document, I could export the pages delete them from the original, save it. So there's a lot of different things that you can do with PDF Shuffler. So that's kind of what I'm using to do my uh, PDF edits. Um, simple scan is the first item, PDF Shuffler is the second. Now, as you're doing your music files, you might encounter some problems with your some of your tags. And so for this, I use KID3. And some people have had a hard time using it. Um, I actually... I mean, I don't use a lot of different taggers, so I can't say if this is easier or harder to use than other ones. Um, but what I really liked about this one is just the ability to get in here and just duplicate tags easier. So uh, maybe I can go into my Chronicles of Narnia CDs here that I have. And you can come over here, and one of the things that I noticed is that some devices as you're extra extracting or ripping CDs will only give you like a tag two and not a tag one. but uh, my MP3 player that I keep in my kitchen to listen to stuff as I'm in the kitchen cooking, um, it will only read a tag one. So if it only, if my documents have only uh, brought in a tag two, then the, the tag will not duplicate over. But what you can very easily do with this is you can literally copy a pile of them and then hit the from tag two uh, to create a tag one and a tag two in a batch system so I don't have to do that, you know, a hundred times for different files. So with this, I'm actually easily able to come in here, grab uh, whatever file I need to do, make any slight adjustments. Again, I can do a mass adjustment if I need to you know, do a mass artist or album change. So once you make any adjustments, you just uh, what you'll see then is you'll see that an individual item will have a save tag. That just means that there's something that needs saved. So hit the save and that'll go ahead and save everything up at the top. And this is how I make sure that all of my, uh, all of my systems um, have appropriate tags. And actually I did not include it as a tool. Um, I'm gonna hit no because I don't need to save that one. I did not actually include it as a tool, but what I use to verify that the tags work right is actually Banshee because I like the way that it reads off of the tags and it'll kind of tell me if I have things off a little bit in different locations so I can actually go ahead and, and verify 
things work correct. So that's kind of, I use Banshee. I'm not going to include that in my tool list, but that's the one I use to make sure that all of my tags are set right because I can very easily visually see if any artists are off or if any albums are off uh, very quickly. So that's the third tool that I'm using in, in this uh, digital approach. Of course, the fourth, I've talked about, and this will probably be the third or fourth time I mention it in videos, but K Address Book, which once again, I have my personal contacts dechecked. You can actually create a variety of different folders and address lists. And what I like about this is now I can keep all of my contacts on a Linux-based system and not worry about uh, not worry about where they're uh, you know are they are they going to be locked into the operating system or whatever. For example, on my silly little iPhone here, um, the um, uh, I can't get the contacts off of the iPhone without going through some cloud service. And I don't want to send all my contacts to Apple's cloud or Google's cloud or some Verizon's cloud. But with this, I now have a means to have all my contacts. And this is I'm switching all my devices, like all of my, my production devices over to Android. Android actually has the ability to simply plug in a USB port on the bottom and save, you know, save it as as a file or simply save it as a file onto my computer so I can just grab it with uh, USB. But then this K address book, I can address, I can export all of my addresses as a simple address file and then just simply import it into, into anything. Which by the way, if you do use an iPhone and you're not locked into their cloud, you can easily make your adjustments manually to your address book and you can easily import a, a uh, contact list into an iPhone. You just can't get one out. So that's why I use uh, K Address Book. Of course, to create a new contact, you want to choose where you're going to add it to, either your personal contacts, your business contacts, or personal slash business folder. You can give it the name, the nickname, give it emails, phone numbers, any messages. You can put in locations, full addresses, notes, variety of different things that you can do. And then you can choose to export uh, into a variety of different cards or other file formats. So you can do that uh, to make adjustments. You might need to. One of the things I found that importing it onto this guy here is one of the fields on K Address Book seemed to be interfering with my ability to import them easily. I found out it was actually an address field. So I was able to, to drop it into a CSV, open that up, kill the address field, resave it, and then uh, that actually worked perfectly. So you had a variety of different things you can do, and that's why I like K Address Book. Of course, there's another one, which is the GNOME Contacts. Um, I don't actually use that one as much, um, uh, simply because it doesn't work on, uh, it didn't work on Ubuntu Mate when I tried to install it. Um, so I really don't have as much uh, experience with it. But K Address Book has worked on every uh, distro I've ever installed it on. So I want to talk about that. Of course, the last one is, uh, is actually OBS. Um, I've talked about Simple Screen Recorder in the past, which is great for doing some things. Uh, but the reason I wanted to pick OP, uh, OBS on here is that OBS is what I'm using if I need to record any of my uh, videotapes or any of my you know archives that I've had. Like if we had a camcorder uh, and on VHS tapes, I can plug a capture card into the back of my um, uh, onto the back of my DVD player. And I actually found that OBS is the very best place to. Uh, to um, import that data because I can just simply come on down and and uh, add up a new um, a new screen capture. Uh, basically, just use a video capture device and simply grab the video capture from uh, from the uh, whatever device I'm using to plug into the back of the VCR, and then I can just hit play over there, hit start record over here, and I can capture all of my uh, all of my data right off the VHS tapes. So those are my top five tools that I'm using in part of my uh, minimalizing, converting a lot of these piles of files into actual digital files, which I can thus save on USB drives, hard drives, <laughs> random operating systems. So those are my top five tools. Let me, your, let me know your top five tools down in the comments below. And once again, if you would like to help support what we're doing, check out switchtolinux.com forward slash support. And uh, you can learn how you can best help us. And uh, with that, thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.